all five of the major North American tribes were slave owners themselves. So when an American African tells you, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a Choctaw, I'm a Seminole, I'm a Creek, what exactly are they saying? Are you saying that you were a slave of the Seminole, a slave of the Choctaw, a slave of the Chickasaw? And if you were a slave of a Native American tribe, how is that any better than being a slave to a white man? I would agree. Capitalism has no solutions in it for black people. But what we have amongst us is we have capitalist minded neo Negroes who try to seduce black people into thinking that imitating the white man's economic system offers some hope for black economic liberation. And that is totally dishonest. It is opportunistic. It has no evidence to support it. I disagree with that logic. It is historically incorrect. It is anthropologically incorrect. It is biologically incorrect. It is genetically incorrect. It is ancestrally incorrect. African people are the first people on the planet Earth. And every other human family, except possibly the European, descends directly from us. If we do not leave Africa, no other race evolves from us. We would still be the only people on this planet if we never left Africa. For those who say we were in America before slavery, they are correct. We were in America before slavery because we were everywhere before slavery. We're the oldest people. We were on the planet by ourselves for tens of thousands of years before any other race evolved from us. So we're the first people in America. We're the first people in the Caribbean. We're the first people in Europe. We're the first people in Asia. So yes, we were here. When you read the diaries of Christopher Columbus, he talks of seeing African people, black skin, woolly hair, just like the ones he saw in Africa. Let us remember that Christopher Columbus did not discover. Christopher Columbus spent time in West Africa. And if memory serves me correctly, he spent approximately two weeks in the Elmina slave dungeon, during which time he was given a map that showed him how to get over to the so-called new world. He was educated about the three major currents that flow from the West African coast over to North America, South America, and then the Caribbean. And so all he had to do was catch the sea current to the direction that he wanted to go. Oh, yes, he had several Africans who were on board with him. And of course, absolutely. And some people would call them Moors, but more means black. You know, so we also have to pay attention to all these different names that they give to African people to try to make us think they were not African people. But yes, he had African people who were there with him. And he took the third current, the bottom current, that brought him to the Caribbean islands. So it was not a mistake. It was not an accident. It was not a discovery. He was simply following the instructions that were given to him by Africans who had already circum uh, circumnavigated the planet. We were the first people on the ocean. You know, uh, yes, it's true. The Portuguese had a golden age of uh, maritime science and the Chinese had a golden age of maritime science. But people forget that the Africans were the first with the golden age of maritime science, because if we were not the first in shipping, how did we get all around the world? Because we definitely did not swim. So getting back uh, to your question, we were here before Columbus. So yes, you have pre-Columbian Africans in America. You have post-Columbian Africans in America. The issue that we have with brothers and sisters who are miseducating our children and our people, telling them that they didn't come from Africa, is the fact that everybody came from Africa. And it is ridiculous for the people who look the most like Africans to be the only ones in the world who would dare say, we don't come from Africa. Uh, we all come from Africa, but we can't get distracted by this type of propaganda and incorrect rhetoric because we've always had to deal with this um, as American Africans and throughout the diaspora. You know, when you look at uh, the Honorable Marcus Garvey and after his deportation from America in 1927, many of the organizations who came after Garvey also propagated to our people that they were not African. All due respect to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
He taught our people that they were not African, that they were Asiatics. All due respect to the prophet Noble Drew Ali, he taught our people that they were not African, that they were Asiatics. So we have a history of black leaders coming before our people and basically distracting them from their Africanity. Uh, again, all these black men did, did great things, but they also uh, um, continued to put forth the untruth that we were not an African people. So we have to deal with that. And this is rooted in self-hate. This is rooted in psychological homelessness. This is rooted in African racial uh, low self-esteem. And I also think it might even be rooted in a CIA scheme to brainwash black people into thinking that they were already here so they can do away with concepts such as reparations. They can do away with concepts such as repatriation. They could do away with concepts such as global unification of all African people because there are some very clear uh, and very powerful uh, ramifications uh, for this type of uh, dangerous and senseless rhetoric. But now that we have DNA testing, we don't have to debate who is and who isn't from Africa. Roll up your sleeve, give some blood, send it to the land, send it to the lab, and when it comes back, let's see if it says you're anything other than an African. But the other point I want to make that I think some of these pretendians, because this is what I call them, good sister, pretendians, because they're pretending to be Indians. Here's the thing. The five major Native American tribes fought with the Confederacy to maintain slavery. All five of the major North American tribes were slave owners themselves. So when an American African tells you, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a Choctaw, I'm a Seminole, I'm a Creek. What exactly are they saying? Are you saying that you were a slave of the Seminole, a slave of the Choctaw, a slave of the Chickasaw? And if you were a slave of a Native American tribe, how was that any better than being a slave to a white man? And still further, even if your mother was raped by a Chickasaw slave master, why would you be proud of that? But let's go a step further, and I'll stop with this point here. We have four grandparents. We have eight great-grandparents. We have 16 great-great-grandparents. And we have 32 great-great-great-grandparents. If one of your great-great-great-grandparents, one of 32, was a Native American, how does that disqualify all of your African blood and now you become 100% Native American. How is that possible? And why are you dismissing all of your African DNA to lay claim to 132nd of your so-called Native American DNA? It's all self-hatred. Good question. It is true that within the political and philosophical history of revolutionary Pan-Africanism, we have had a split. We have had a nationalist versus socialist split, and we still have a nationalist versus socialist split within the world and ranks of Pan-Africanism. There are those who have a leaning or an orientation to Marxism, as you mentioned, and socialism. Uh, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture, he was of that energy. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah, after he met W.E.B. Du Bois and uh, George Padmore and others, he became C.L.R. James. He became more of that persuasion. Uh, so you have had your socialists. Patrice Lumumba was not. Patrice Lumumba was straight up and down nationalist. Amakal Cabral had socialist leanings. Robert Sabukwe of South Africa, straight up and down nationalist, Pan-African nationalist. I am a straight up and down Pan-African nationalist, as was the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. So you do have both of those camps. And that is a debate and a philosophical difference that we will always have. But what we try to do as Pan-Africanists is we try to, as much as we can, although it can't totally be done, is we try to minimize the difference of ideo ideological approach between nationalists and socialists and we try to unite as much as possible around the central goal of Pan-Africanism, which is the total unification and liberation of African people. But I do not support Pan-African communism or socialism. I don't think Karl Marx or Friedrich Engels or 
uh, anyone else, Joseph Stalin or any of the rest of them had anything that I feel I need to make use of in the struggle to liberate African people. As I often tell people, I am not a capitalist or a communist. I am a pan-Africanist. Great question. We have to understand something. The only reason why people would even begin to consider capitalism as a viable economic system of liberation is because slavery gave capitalism a 500 year head start over any other modern economic system. We were the first capital in capitalism and African people need to understand that. The enslaved African was the first capital in capitalism. So when you make, when you force people to work four or five centuries for free and you build up wealth off of their backs, which gives birth to an industrial revolution, and you use that to tout how economically intelligent you are, it's very fraudulent because it was slavery that made capitalism what capitalism is. So along with El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, fellow Pan-Africanist, child of the Garvey movement, I would agree. Capitalism has no solutions in it for black people. But what we have amongst us is we have capitalist minded neo Negroes who try to seduce black people into thinking that imitating the white man's economic system offers some hope for black economic liberation. And that is totally dishonest. It is opportunistic. It has no evidence to support it. Capitalism has never saved anybody. It didn't save Europe. It didn't save Asia. It didn't save Africa. Capitalism is not a system that one uses to liberate. Capitalism is the exploitation of the many by the few. Capitalism seeks to make 99% of the world the dependency of the 1% of the world. In America, we have about 100 Europeans who own more wealth than everybody else in the country. Than everybody else in the country. And globally, there's about a thousand people who own more wealth than the rest of the world put together. That is capitalism. How can anyone believe that a system as exploitative, selfish, and unfair as that can be used to liberate African people? Capitalism cannot be on the table of discussion if we're talking liberation uh, economics. As far as the privatization of industry, I believe that everything should be nationalized or at least should be considered to be nationalized unless the government has a rationale that would justify why any of the major industries are in the hands of private citizens. And I would dare argue that nobody but a capitalist would want to put critical industries in the hands of private citizens. For example, why is food in the hands of private citizens? Okay, why is health care in the hands of private citizens? Why is water in the hands of private citizens? Anything that is critically necessary for the survival of humanity should never be privatized. Because when you privatize food, when you privatize land, when you privatize agriculture, when you privatize water, when you privatize medical health care, you are in essence giving individuals control over the lives of others. And I don't support that. I would just like to um, say add in here that, you know, as far as we are concerned, there's basically, yeah, as far as we are concerned, there's basically two types of economic systems. 